Hi, I'm David from Elective Teaching, and this is part five, making your own graphing program, or as I'm saying, your own grapher. Let's see. We're going to put in the return keyboard stroke commands. We need to put go down here to where the keyboard and mouse actions are in our if Pygame event area is. And let's see. Down here, after putting in the X command, we're going to set up Let's see, the else if event key is a return. And so what we're going to do is once somebody hits return, they're going to want the program to the equation to be graphed. And so we're going to exit this loop. We're going to call out a new function that will graph the equation and go from there, basically. So let's see if event dot key double equal k underscore oops underscore all caps return return key which is labeled as the enter key in most keyboards these days and we're going to hit return as i say i'm still kind of old school with that and now we're going to tell it to go active is now false active is now false this is the the controller of the loop uh, the infinite loop that we're in and this is the point we want to exit the loop that we started right here where we're basically blitting the equation and updating the screen of all the graphics that are already on it continually and waiting for somebody to strike a keyboard command or a mouse command and then make changes and so we want to leave this loop but here's the catch I don't want to quit as we would if we left it at right now because the next line of command is to quit. So I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to put in a new command here. gives us an option to quit <clears throat> at this point, or at the entering, at entering equation. Okay. Oops. Or to move on, or to graph. And that's basically what we're going to do here. We're going to say if, and I'm going to make a new variable here, new variable here called done. I'll initialize it in a second. Let me just go with the flow here. So if done, in other words, if done is true, we're going to just say pygame.quit, double parentheses, just like we had before, so that we don't need it down here anymore. We won't need it down here anymore. We're just going to, in fact, we'll move this line. I should have moved it all up there, but we'll move this comment line to be right here. Nothing left to do except quit if we get to this moment. and Delete it from here. And now we're going to put in an else statement. Else. There's only a second, one other option here, so we don't need an else if. So we're just going to do the else. And this is where we're going to say, okay, let's do the graph equation. And I'm going to come back to this in a second. Well, no, I'll go ahead and finish it off right here. Um, I'm going to put a little comment in. This is a clip, a clipping command. We're going to clip the right side of the screen, okay, except the equation, except the equation, okay. So except equation down at the bottom, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to say screen dot set underscore clip parentheses width comma zero so that's starting up at the upper right side of the blank area comma go all the way over to the width plus extra width extra w and then all the way down to height but we want to leave the equation so I think I'm doing it minus 30 these days. I have it written down here minus 40 on a previous version of this. So I don't know. We'll try it out. And if I have a problem with that, we'll come back and change that. We need to fill this part of the screen. Fill this part of the screen. So we're going to do a screen dot fill. And we're going to say white. Excuse me. Parentheses. White. Close parentheses. And then we need to reset the clip. The screen clip. So we need to do the screen dot set underscore clip and go capitals none. Make sure it turns purple, I believe. Yeah, it does. It turns purple. 
Okay, and then we're going to call out graph the equation at this point. So then we're going to call out the graph the equation. So I'll just put out a little note here. Graph equation function called. All right. So we're going to make a new graph equation here. Got a lot of things to do here. So hopefully I don't forget them. I'm going to make the done. And I got to do the graph equation here. So graph eq, this equation a function I'll make in a minute here. And the only thing I have to pass is the k. That's the only variable that we've created inside of another function. So we either have to make it global or pass it through. And I'm going to pass k on. And I'll show you why later for the resizing option of the grid. So down below here, I'm going to have to make a new, a new function called graph the equation. But before we do that, let's go back up. Okay, if we hit return, we want to leave this. But done is going to be, let's see, we need to start off at done as false. We need to start off done as false. And so I'm going to come back up to the equations way up at the top. <clears throat> Excuse me, losing my voice today. And what we want to do is before we come into the loop, before we come into the loop, right where we start the equation, I think it's a good spot to do this. We're going to put in um, the variable done, and we're going to make that false. We're going to make that false. Let's see, right here. Okay. And if done is false, okay, then this part down here would be if false, then we're just going to quit. Okay. So in other words, if we don't, let's see, if true, excuse me, if true, this will quit. So if this is false, it'll skip the front part and do the else, which is perfect. The only way we're going to change it if we do false is coming back up here to the quit command. Not only will we make active false, we'll say done is true up here. So done is equal to true when it hits this point. So it'll exit the loop. Okay, and after exiting the loop, it'll say that done is true and quit. And that's because the person has actually selected the quit command. All right, let's get down to the graphing of the function now. So I'm going to make a new, new, all the way to the far left-hand side, because we're making a new function. We're going to define a new function, DEF. And this function is going to be called graph, um, graph equation, just like I wrote before. So capital graph, capital EQ. And we're going to pass in. I'm just going to use the same variable name. No reason to mix it up and use a different one. So we'll use K, and let's see. Let's immediately put in the equation for graphing here. Now, <clears throat> sorry, I am losing my voice today. Um, before I put in this equation, I want to remind myself to make sure I put an active loop that allows me to quit once I'm into this part of the equation. That's very important, or this part of the function. So let's not forget that. So this is the graphing. I'm going to put a little comment here. Graphing of, whoops, of the equation, or it's a function most likely. I think it has to be for this function to work, for this equation to work, <clears throat> this graph to work, excuse me. And let's see, the way we're going to do this is for, we're going to do this in a loop, and I'm going to graph it one pixel at a time, one pixel at a time across the width. So 4i in range, parentheses, width, colon, hit return here. So what we're going to do is we need to use a nifty little command called try. Okay, with the command called try, if I have a part of a domain error or any other error in trying to graph the equation, instead of freezing the machine, it'll just skip that part and move on into the next part of the, the increment, the next i, and, and go forward. So this is the only way I've been able to graph equations that have domain errors. So we're going to do try, try colon, and we're going to set up two variables, x and y, and use them as the first position. And then we're going to create a second position and draw a line from there, from one position to the next. And these are going to be one pixel apart, basically. So we're going to do x equal, x equal, parentheses, the width, the width divided by 2, so it takes me to the center, okay, minus i, minus i, 
So I'm going to start basically not so that it uh, basically width divided by two does take me to the center, but also gives me half of the width. So I'm going to start 250 because our width is 500 right now. 250 pixels over to the right, and I'm going to graph this from the right to the left. It just worked out easier to do this. So my first x value, whoops, I'm not done up here, is going to be an actual x value. So based on the k pixels per grid. So I'm going to make this on the grid. This x value would actually be a dot on the grid. And so we're going to divide by the k, but not just k, the integer. I'm going to float k, so I'm going to turn it into basically 25.0 to turn it into a rational number that can use decimals, a decimal number here. And that's really important so I can get every little pixel used here. So the x is, the first x I'm using is basically I0 here, 250 off to the right side, dividing it by k. We're going to plug, we're going to have a y value based on this x. Another great little Python trick has an eval command, an evaluate command. And so the, this is where we're going to evaluate our equation. Since our equation is using x as the variable, and we just threw in a, va a value here, it is now going to evaluate that, e that equation with the x in it, as long as it's typed in correctly. So make sure you know to type it in correctly, and we'll get a y value. First position here, we're going to call it pause 1, is simply the width. I like this is where you go to the middle. The width divided by 2, so I'm using parentheses for the xy location here, width divided by 2 plus plus the x value that we just got times the k value. Now I know I'm dividing by k and multiplying by k and again this is work makes it work well. Okay? Height divided by 2. Okay? And it works backwards here so you're subtracting to go up so minus y star k close parentheses. Okay, now we need to create the second position one pixel away, so this will be one pixel left, and then we're going to draw a line from there to there, a very tiny, tiny line. When it's done, it's going to draw 500 tiny lines, basically, because it's going to do this across the width, and the width right now is 500. So hopefully this is making sense. Let's see, get right back to where I was doing. In X, my next X I'm going to use and I'm going to have to plug and chug it to use the eval equation. So I'm also going to set it to the x variable. Not worried about overlapping it. I've already used this x and got the y from it. So I can use it as a temporary variable, basically. Now I'm going to say this is the width divided by 2. So half the width, in other words, 250 to start off. And then we're going to minus the next i. So parentheses, i plus 1, close parentheses. So what we're doing is we're subtracting off the next i. I need to divide this whole thing, the whole thing, that's why I have the extra parentheses up front, by the float k, by the float parentheses k. So double check your parentheses. You need the numerator. So open parentheses, close parentheses, just like in mathematics. It's going to make sure the whole numerator is grouped, but then divide by the value. Double checking here. I've got width divided by 2. I don't need the spaces. Subtracting off the next i, i plus 1, and a little grouping here. Parentheses for the numerator, divide by k looks good. Same exact idea as before. The n, y will be the equals eval, evaluate. The equation, now this equation has the next x in it. And then we're going to make pause 2 pretty much the same way. So pause 2 is equal to the width divided by 2. This is taking me to the middle plus the nx times k, nx times k, and then the y value is the height halfway down, minus, still doing minus here, but the ny star k, close parentheses. Last thing we need to do now is to do pi game dot draw dot line, just like we made with the grids, surface, screen, um, color. Oh, I think I have something called what graph color I made, right? And then from pause one to pause two, and let's make it three pixels big. 
I think three pixels makes it look a little choppy. Two pixels looks clean. One pixel looks really nice, but too thin in my opinion. So it's kind of up to you. I'm going to do three pixels, just like the graph color and everything else. This is where you can personalize it. Now, after a try command, you need to, or I believe it's a good idea to, put the accept command. And in this case, we have no exception. I could put in some nifty ideas and list all the X's that didn't work. It would be domain errors, and so keep that in mind for personalizing yours. In this case, I'm just simply going to put a pass command. Now, before I forget, let's make sure we, in this new function here, we have a way of quitting. So later we'll do more than just quit. We're going to make a new active loop. So a new active loop here. Active equal, excuse me, equal um, true. Let's put a little command above here, or a little, excuse me, comment above here. So let's say this is just running a uh, infinite loop to control the window. Okay. And just like we said, we need to make an infinite loop. So let's do while active colon. Just like we did before, we need a way to update the screen. Don't forget, we need to update the screen. So let's put a little command, a little comment that we're updating the screen. And then the pi game dot display, display dot update parentheses parentheses. Okay, and just like before, in fact, because I've done this before, I don't want to do it wrong. I'm going to steal it from where I've done it before. Here's the active faults and everything. In fact, we'll take the comment too and bring it down. Since we know that one works in the previous function, let's not take a chance on making a typo. And I have gone a long ways without, whoops, trying to get spaced correctly here. Here we go. And I have gone a long ways without running this. I am a little worried that we're going to have errors, but we'll learn from them and go for the go from there. Okay, if we exit the loop, don't forget the only thing left to do. In fact, just want to kind of well, I'll type it in. It's a short one. Okay, and the only thing left to do get in line with the running of the loop here. Yep, yep, yep. In line with that. Okay. Only thing, make a little comment. Only thing left to do is quit and so again we'll put the pie game whoops excuse me put the pie game quit command here so pie game dot quit all right let's see if this will work i'm a little worried well let's try it okay so far so good but that's everything we had before. I'm going to slide this over a little bit so we can see part of it on the, on the video screen here. Let's type in a simple command. How about just X and hit return? Okay, did not work. Let's find out what happened. I'm going to pause the video and try to figure this Hi, I'm back, and I figured out what the problem was, and it was difficult, and I want to show you why, because the try commands... The try commands, well, if something in here doesn't work, then none of it works. And that's what was happening is the quit command worked down here, no problem. Screen was updating, no problem. I just didn't see a graph. So I figured out that I forgot to pass the equation. So there was an error that wasn't even showing up on the shell because the try command just didn't even bother. And the equation wasn't passed. So come back up here to where we call out the graph equation. Put in an eq comma k. This is a variable that we made within this function, so therefore we either need to global it or pass it. Now run the module and see what happens. Let's try two star x minus one. And I got my graph. Looks good. Okay, and uh, I think we'll call it quits right here. And for the next parts, we'll show you how to have a little more interaction on this side and add in all the math commands like uh, the trig functions like I said before. So I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope you're enjoying this. I have to tell you I really like having my own personal grapher. I know I'm a little bit geeky saying that but this is really kind of a neat program and I hope other math and science people out there appreciate having taken the time to make their own grapher. 
Again, I'm David from Electric Teaching, and I bid you good night.